Hi everyone, it's Vicki McClifty here from AM Healing My Soul TV and today I'm chatting with Luke Pierce. Now Luke is a master practitioner, hi Luke, <laughs> is a master practitioner of NLP and hypnotherapy and timeline therapy. Luke has discovered it was the enemy in his mind that was holding him back from living the life he wanted to live and he now dedicates his life to helping others do so. So welcome today, Luke. Uh, thank you very much for having me. It's awesome to be here and awesome to, uh, to chat to everyone watching this as well. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming. So Luke, how did you get to where you are now? Wow, that's, uh, that's a pretty big question. I suppose to answer that uh, very directly was, um, I suppose like I experienced enough uh, sort of pain and suffering uh, growing up in order to find out what I truly wanted um, now, like in my adult years. So, you know, how did I get to where I am now? Uh, mm -hmm. I figured out what, like I, I figured out how I didn't want life to be. And then in that, you know, in that, it caused me to obviously grow into what I am and what I do now. Mm -hmm. So what was it that you didn't want to be? So I suppose like I didn't want to be like someone who just woke up and just went through the, uh, paces of like, right, get a job, you know, listen to your boss, do what everyone else tells you. And then you just sort of, you know, that's like it. Right. So, um, you know, like I've always wanted to be like free. Right. And I thought that, uh, that for me was not very freeing. That experience was not very freeing. So I had to do a lot of things to, to, um, you know, get my mindset in the right position and the right thought patterns to then, achieve whatever it is that I wanted to achieve. Yeah. In your early days, you, you've you overcome drinking problems? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So say when I was like probably 16 to maybe 18, I had a uh, real bad drinking problem. And when I say drinking problem, it wasn't such a fact that, um, you know, it was it was drinking to, to like numb my problems drinking to numb like the feelings that i had so uh yeah it was pretty serious right and i mean for a young man it's very serious right there's many many men many people around uh australia and on this planet right now that are in the same position yeah. and that comes from a belief or a thought or something that happened in the past that they're trying to push down it just doesn't have to be that way no it doesn't because you know if you the more you push it down the harder the problem will will become well that's exactly right and that's pretty much uh was like my life in a nutshell right like first mm -hmm. of all uh it was something small then it got bigger then it got bigger then it got bigger and it really got to a point one day where if i didn't do something about it then i would have suffered you know massively and also the people around me would have suffered uh, more than what they did mm. So did you have a turning point, Luke, as to when you actually woke up to the fact that you were doing the wrong thing? Yeah, so I had a turning point. I can still remember this day, you know, just like it was yesterday. I was 17. I might have been maybe going on 18, yeah. right? So just keep in mind that 18, you're not even allowed to, like, you know, go to the uh, bottle shop and get alcohol or even go out to nightclubs. But I was doing all this, right? Like, I looked a lot older than most uh, kids and that sort of stuff and I was sort of brought up in a small town so um, mm. yeah that didn't really worry me I still got my hands a hold of it but um, you know the turning point was really getting to the stage in my life where if I didn't do something I was either going to do something to myself that was going to harm my life or I was going to do something to someone else that was going to harm them and I'm talking like um, you know sort of uh, like no longer being here yeah you know and um, I just knew in that moment that, you know, the actions and the consequences that I had created was like I was living them. Mm. And I was like, hang on a minute. So if I've got myself to this point and it's this bad, right? It's everything that I didn't want to live, had a job that I didn't want, had a relationship that I didn't want, had, uh, you know, the body that I didn't want, everything I didn't want, I had it. Mm. I was like, man, this is not good. But I thought in that moment, I've got like two options. I can either keep going down the track that I was going down or if I got myself into this position, I can get myself out of it. Yeah. And that was sort of a, a, like a light bulb moment. I was like, hang on, I've never heard this like voice in my head that said, no, hang on a second, you can do something different. Mm. And from that moment on, I just started listening to that voice, right? And <laughs> it turns out that it's pretty, uh, pretty switched on. And it is because it's, you know, it's like intuition, it's guidance, yeah. it's whatever you want to label it as. Yeah. 
So how are you helping people now? I think, um, you know, it is crazy, right? You've only got to like turn on the news or even just like look around on a, on a yeah. weekend. You can just see people that don't even have to be like the, the younger people could be any age that are using alcohol and going out and fighting and, you know, all this other sort of silly stuff to suppress emotions and things that are coming up unconsciously. Mm. So I think a big thing for myself that really helped me out was I always knew and I always understood that like I was destined on my life, like it had purpose. Yeah. You know I mean, I wasn't just here to like drink and go to work for someone else and do things that didn't really have any meaning to it. Mm. So when all this stuff was going down, that was always in the back of my head. It's like, no, you're here for a bigger purpose. Like you're here for something like better or bigger than this. Yeah. And I truly do believe now, and I know now that I had to go through everything that I went through in order to help people out now to, you know, transition through that same stage or to maybe lessen the blow and say, hey, you're heading down that track. You don't have to. You can bypass that track and go to this track as long as you get the learnings and the things that you really need. Yeah, it's just, just giving them guidance, isn't it, that there is stuff out there and a yeah. lot of the youth today or well anyone as you said that has an emotional problem um do fall into the category of taking um you know antidepressants and things like that oh, 100%. yeah definitely definitely it's, yeah. Oh, yeah you know and they can be hooked on those because they're not you know they think that's the way to go but that actually they can't go through the emotions when they do that and then it just yeah. doesn't get any better yeah so it's a crazy thing like um Another, I suppose, like when you look at the biggest picture, like what actually happened in my mind, like what actually mm -hmm. happened on a on a uh, on a mental level, I started asking questions, and I questioned every single thing that I did in my life. I was like, why do I go to the job that I go to? Why do I hang out with the people I hang out with? Why do I this? Why do I this? And why do I this? Yeah. And when I started asking these questions, and I questioned every single thing, I'm like, why do I wear the clothes that I wear? it started like I started getting answers that seemed so clear and so obvious, but yeah, I just never asked it before. Yeah. So I think like for anyone out there, it's like, you know, why do I do what I do? Oh, well, you know, for myself, why do I drink? Or why did I drink? Well, I drink because I've got these emotions that are coming up that I don't like feeling. Mm. And I drink because when I drink, it allows the true me to come out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's very important for everyone doing anything is to question, like question what their life is about. Question, yeah, question what their life is about and why they're here. I think that's very, very important. Yeah, what you said there too about drinking until your real self came out, that, yeah. that, that's huge because we all walk around with a mask yeah. in society and people don't know what's going on behind that mask yeah you, you know you give the the front that you're feeling okay that everything is fine and you can go home and your life's just absolute crap yes and you, you know and you feel like crap yeah and you feel you know real and you 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 know i mean i did the same thing myself when i was going through my grieving and i would go out and and people say hey go oh fine fine and really i was think i was feeling horrible yeah Exactly. And I was, I've been in the exact same position as well. People would say to me, oh, Lukey, like, how are you going? Um, what's going on? How's life treating you? And you just do this. Yeah, everything's good. And on the inside, like just screaming, like just screaming for someone to say, hey, it's okay to be you or it's okay for you to go and do this, this or this. That's right. And yeah. I think it really is like when people drink, their true self comes out because their, their guard is um lowered of what other people think yeah that's why you get some people that have like three or four wines or three or four drinks and before you know it they've got like the lampshade on their head and they're <laughs> for the party <laughs> yeah. but inside that's really who's screaming to get out it's someone that wants to be accepted it's someone that wants to be heard and it's someone that wants to like really enjoy and have fun that's right but for whatever reason they would have picked up like a limiting decision or something along the way when they were younger of like, you shouldn't do that because if you do that, that means you're childish. Or if you do this, that yeah. means that. Yeah. And before you know it, people stop doing things that are authentic and that are actually them. Yeah, and because we hang on to these beliefs, don't we? That becomes our paradigm <laughs> of our lives if we yeah. don't look through the, it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So um, someone's beliefs, 
someone's beliefs, like it really does construct their reality and what they live. Mm. You know I mean, I work with lots and lots of people from, you know, all around the world, right? So um, someone would say, oh, I've got this belief of, you know, let's just say it's like weight loss. Oh, I can't lose weight. Mm. Like, all right, cool. That's, that's someone else's belief, but that's not my belief. Mm. So then you ask them, I'm like, well, when did you decide that? Like, when did you decide that you couldn't lose weight? And then it would take them back to an event where something happened and, you know, they would be like, oh, my God, I never even knew that was it. Yeah. So your beliefs really do, whether you like to think it or not, they create everything. They do. They do. Yeah. Every single person, no matter if it's like grief, no matter if it's love, no matter if it's motivation or anything on the planet, everyone has a different like strategy or a different way of doing it in their own head. That's right. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So that means that no two people are obviously alike. We all know that, but no two people are going to have the same exact same mechanism to deal with grief or, you know, anything else. So everyone's going to be different, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Everyone is, you know, we've, we've all got our different paradigms. We've all got our different beliefs in life. And yeah. yeah so what I was also going to ask you too, like what you do, Luke, do NLP, hypnotherapy and timeline therapy. Yeah. How would that be able to help people who are going through grief? Yeah. So realistically, timeline therapy, NLP and uh, hypnotherapy is working with your unconscious mind. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So our unconscious mind is very, 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 very powerful, right? It's the most powerful thing that you have in your body right now. And it's the most powerful thing that you'll ever have like in your life, right? It literally runs everything. Yeah. So how would that help? I would say by helping people to focus on exactly what they want and exactly how they want to um, feel and act towards the, the, the so-called loss or transition phase. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So rather than focusing on the things that are going to cause them, you know, sadness, anger, hurt, guilt, or anything like that, yeah. you would be able to use the techniques, you'd be able to use the, um, you know, the, the formats and the, the patterns to then, then ask someone, well, how, how do you want to, like, how do you want to respond to this? How do you want life to be now that you've gone through this transition? Yeah. And there's no one out there, or very, very, very rarely do I ever meet anyone that says, you know what, I really just want to suffer and I want it to be really, really hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone is like, man, I just want it to be better. I just want to be remembering them for who they were or remembering this or, you know, acting this way. But yet, you know, if it's not there on an unconscious level, then it's going to show up in, you know, their everyday actions. Yeah. And I, I think too, people uh, need to be a little bit more kind to themselves. So oh, 100%. Yeah. Too harsh on their recovery as well. I mean, there, yeah. there, there's a point where, um, I think you need to go through the sadness and you need to grieve. But, yes, definitely, yeah. You know, but then you don't want to be stuck there. Um, yeah. It's when you're stuck and you don't know how to move forward that I reckon this would be so beneficial. A hundred percent. So look, the grieving process is a grieving process. Like we said, uh, yeah. everyone has different stages of it. The mm -hmm. thing that, um, that I'm really interested about, and especially in this conversation that we're happening, uh, having, is the suffering process. Yeah. Because suffering is standing on a nail and it really hurts, but not taking your foot off the nail. Yeah. That's what I would use analogy for suffering is. It's something that you don't need to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yet, how many times have you seen it with people that you've worked with and talked with? You know, something, an event might have happened, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever it is. Mm. And the grieving, session, the grieving process has taken place, but yet, like you said, they're stuck there. Yeah. That's where, you know, with the work that we do with the unconscious mind is so powerful because it gets people through the so-called stuckness and into what they really want to focus on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's why it's so positive. Powerful. Positive. I'm focusing on the good stuff, you know, that, that's what helped me. You know, I, I started to, um, with my law of attraction coaching, yeah. we did a whole lot of things where we focused on uh, positive, you know, what we wanted in life. And I like many other people, didn't have any focus or any goals. Uh, it was just to survive each day. Yep. So many people are on that merry-go-round where they're not tuning in to who they are. They're, exactly. You know, they've got no idea, no goal. It's just a survival mode. 
Yeah. And that's, you know, like the grieving process is a process that, like we've said many times before, everyone's going to go through it differently, but the grieving process is something that people will, um, it'll have different effects on their psychology. It'll have different effects on their life. Some people will just shut down totally. Like you said, go into like survival mode and just like, uh, why me, why me, why me sort of thing. Other people might deal with it in a different way and be like, all right, well, cool. Um, it just is what it is. I just got to do what I got to do. And then I've just got to move on and hope that I can, you know, live a normal life again. Yeah. Yeah. Then other people will see the gift in everything and be like, wow, even though this event happened, um, I'm going to take this event and I'm going to turn it into something beautiful. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that philosophy that we're just talking about, those three different types of people, is in every area uh, of people's lives. So people can do that with weight, they can do that with health, they can do that with money, they can do that with spirituality. It's, it's all just how this thing up here is working and what it directs you to. Yeah, it, it's, you've got to get that um, mindset that you've, you mentioned about with the, the, the timeline therapy too. Like if you've got some belief that you're not worthy or, you know, things like that, um, that's going to totally change how you react in think everything in your life. Oh, so good. powerful. So powerful. Well, you imagine this, right? Let's just, if we took uh, grief as a, uh, you know, context, if you took grief and, someone was grieving and they had a limiting decision or a limiting belief that it's bad to feel good. Mm. Could you imagine how much that would play a role on someone's life in order to keep them in the so-called suffering phase? It would be massive. And do you know how many people right now have the, um, you know, this is unconscious by the way, we don't know about this, right? Yeah. It's unconscious, but yeah. you know, do you know how many people now have the thought of like, Oh, I'm actually a bad person if I feel good all the time. Yeah. Madness. It's just um, well, it's absolutely madness. You can often feel that you're betraying your loved one. If you've lost someone and you feel like you've betrayed, uh, you'll, you actually start laughing and have a good time and then you start feeling guilty. Mm. Yeah, that's exactly right. You need to be able to uh, give yourself permission to be happy. Yes. So, so powerful. Um, yeah you know, giving yourself permission. And also there could be things like, uh, you know, like I don't deserve, someone might have a limiting decision of like, oh, I'm not worthy of loving anyone ever again, because, you know, I gave my love to this person, if it was like an intimate relationship or something like that, or you know what I mean, right? So, you know, timeline therapy helps people to unblock that because that is a limiting belief, right? If you have that decision, then there's, there's only so much of a limit that your life can experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why it's so powerful to really know what's going on in your own mind because there's there's so much there that's happening without us even knowing about it. Yeah, it it, it works over time out mind. <laughs> well, you yeah. I know when when I lost Adam um, that I felt guilty as a mother, and there would be so many mothers there out there who lose a child or even with miscarriage or stillbirth or young children, oh, yeah. that child is, yeah. the mother is always going to blame herself. Mm-hmm. And for the first two years, I blamed mm-hmm. myself. And yet there was nothing that I could do. Yeah. I couldn't, but I had to give my, I had to forgive myself. So it's also giving, you give yourself permission to be happy, but you've also got to forgive yourself even like, because you, you just feel that way. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not your fault. I mean, yeah. their time was up. And that was, you know, their lot in life. Yeah. Whatever they did. And, um, you know, that make, makes you stronger and become the person that you are. Well, definitely. And I mean, like, yeah. it's, it's easy for... Uh, now, I say this with utmost, utmost respect to anyone out there that's ever done this, but, like, it's easy for other people, if they've never experienced it, to, like, give advice and, oh, you should be doing this and you should be doing that, right? Yeah. But if you haven't been through it, it's a very different story. It is, yeah. um, you know, so that's why I say like, it's easy for me to, you know, I can sit here and say like, oh, you know, you do this, this and this, and this is going to help. And this is going to help. And it's easy for yourself to do that because you've been through it and you've experienced it. But if someone is watching this right now and they're going through it, I think what you just said before is like um, allowing yourself the permission to, <clears throat> excuse me, feel what it is that you feel. Yep. 
Like, that's great. You've got to go through your process. But the biggest thing that we're touching base on here is like the suffering stage. Because mm -hmm. if, the, if the process of grief doesn't go like this, it ends up going down into a suffering phase. And that's the phase where um, the, the stuckness happens, right? Yeah, and, and yeah. everything can go wrong, you know, because mm. a, a, it's the lowest vibration. Mm. B, it's where illness sets in. Yes, 100%. Yeah. You know, because you are what you feel. That, mm -hmm. I mean, you are what you eat as well, but you, emotions play, play such a huge impact on your health. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, you know, and your diet, you know, you, you don't feel like eating as well. You, because you're grieving and you're upset, you know, everything sort of falls by the wayside and yeah. you're not sleeping well. And yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's so true. I think, you know, if there was ever a, a most important point of probably like this conversation now is just then, like it's all well and good to like have these emotions and all these sorts of stuff. That that's mm -hmm. cool, right? We all go through them. Whether you're grieving or whether you've you know kicked your toe getting out of bed, the more you're going to experience anger or frustration or something like that. But the the, the more important like very direct point that um, like I want to bring up here is that these like negative emotions when they're stored in the body, like you just said, they result. <clears throat> excuse me in things like diseases, like cancer, tumors, and yeah. uh, ulcers, and all these sorts of different things. Mm. And that's, a much, that's a much bigger uh, so-called epidemic than I think what a, a lot of people think. Yes. Could you imagine how many people are going through their day-to-day -day life with anger, sadness, fear, hurt, and guilt? And, mm. they're, and they're the happy ones? Yeah, yeah, and, and that's sad. Um, so crazy. You know, and that causes all this, this horrible disease. So, yeah, no, it... I, it sounds really great, the therapy and everything that you're doing, Luke. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I love yeah. the whole idea of it. Um, so if you had 30 seconds to share a message, what would you say? Wow, okay. All right, so time I started. Yeah. <laughs> time I started out. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I would say that the biggest gift that you could give yourself is being truly honest and truthful with who you are what you want to do in this lifetime and giving yourself permission to do that. Yeah. I, I know deep down inside with every you know, cell in my body that when someone is true to themselves and I'm talking actually true, sometimes the truth really hurts. Mm. All right. But I told myself the truth many years ago and it turns out it's pretty good. Yeah. You know what I mean? You tell yourself the truth, you be honest and then you do everything in your power in order to fulfill that no matter what, unconditionally. People can contact, contact me through selfmasterywithluke.com. You can go to there. I've got all the, uh, you know, heaps of information. I've got videos on there. There's uh, MP3 uh, audios on there as well. Uh, also, like on just my Facebook and Instagram, you can just follow me, uh, Luke Pierce. So L-U-K-E-P-E-A-R-C-E -E -E, uh, is probably the best place to find me there. And you do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Also, I've got a couple other different programs for uh, like group coaching as well. Great, great. Well, I'd like to thank you so much, Luke, for sharing all of your information, your expertise today. Oh, no worries at all. Thank you. I think it's an absolutely amazing thing what you're doing. So, you know, if I can help out just this little bit, then, you know, I'm very, very happy. Oh, thanks, Luke. Okay, well, thanks very much. And until next time, everyone, take care and look after yourself and be kind to yourself. Thank you.